Amen. Good evening. As we begin to find our seats, let's establish the presence of God in this place as we sing out some songs of worship. I was glad. Amen. Well, I was glad.
this evening. Uh, let's lift our hands as we sing out this song. Uh, you are holy, Lord. Sunday nights and uh, just uh, coming into the presence of God. Sometimes I'm I'm uh, just uh, just blown away in the uh, just the thought that God's He's here in this place. 
I mean, he's here in this place. And, uh, you know, the uh, faithfulness of God, the, uh, the ministering presence of God. And, you know, tonight there are people that you're carrying uh, a load that uh, Jesus absolutely wants to uh, be allowed, if you'll allow him, to relieve you. And the Bible said to cast your cares upon him because he cares for you. He uh, died for you. He went to the alt. greater love has no man. So I'm just trying to say this. Uh, enter in tonight to what God has. Uh, he wants to encourage people. I just sense such a deep, deep love of God uh, to encourage the hearts of his people. How many have a burden you want to give to God? We especially want to lift up our nation, the leaders of our nation, for God's grace on their lives. Turn them to Jesus. Turn the hearts of the children back to the fathers. And in the sense that, you know what? This nation needs to be turned back to Jesus Christ. And so we're praying for our spiritual leaders, Pastor Greg and his wife, Lisa, and all of the uh, burdens that they carry and the leadership responsibilities. We want to pray for our uh, new missionary in, um, in Belo Horizonte, Brazil. We want to ask God's grace for Victor and, and Kimberly and Victoria. We're praying for the uh, Teelings in Maricopa. We have a special need to pray for uh, Mary uh, Benninger's sister, Monchi, who's lost her son last night in a, in a terrible accident. We want to pray that uh, God would c touch the family. And uh, my understanding is there, uh, there's a young lady on life support that was also critically, critically injured in that accident. We're going to pray for her. And uh, we're also praying for the coming conference that God's going to visit us, help us. May God truly be glorified, number one. Two, may his mind and his purposes be revealed to us through the preaching and uh, the fellowship and all that goes on. Uh, let's believe God for that. And so we're going to pray, and then we subside. I'm going to ask Brother, our evangelist, Bob Burris, if he'll open and lead us to God's throne. Let's pray right now. Father, we love you. We thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed, God, to redeem us from the curse of death, hell, and the grave. We're asking, God, for miracle power to be released in every spoken, unspoken request. Father, we come tonight in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, asking that you would help each and every soul that's in this place tonight. Father, you know the needs of your people. You know the hearts of every individual, uh, their fears, their frustrations, uh, their hopes, their dreams, their desires. And I pray tonight that you would touch us, God. Help us, change us, uh, make us what you would like us to be, Father. I pray tonight for our Savior, God. I so thank you for Jesus Christ, God. Um, I saw, John said he saw a door open in heaven, and and a man on the altar with a book in his hand. And a strong angel said, who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals? And nobody, the Bible says, nobody, nobody took the invitation. And then John began to cry because he began to realize how deeply we are lost. We're lost without God. And then the voice said, came said, no, there is one. There is one, the lamb that was slain, amen. And he came and he opened the heart of God, the book, the book, the future, our future. And he made a, a connection that we once again can be connected to our father, our creator, our God. And I want tonight to just thank you for him coming. And I want you to touch this conference, God. I want you to help us have that, that, that personal sense of your spirit and presence upon us each and every moment and each and every time we gather together with our brothers and sisters from other churches and help us God in Jesus name we pray amen praise God we want to welcome everyone great to have you with us tonight praise God we want to make a few announcements first of all over these next few days uh, as a special time of our declaring to God that we need him to come to conference. And uh, uh, we're going to have fasting and prayer. I want to encourage 
all that would join with us. If you don't feel like you could fast all three days, then whatever you might be able to do, uh, be challenged, be stirred, and we want to pray. And we're going to have special prayer meetings uh, tomorrow and Tuesday night from 7 to 9. So if you could join us over there and help us lay hold of God for his blessing on this conference and for all kinds of needs because we have other needs as well. And, and we're going to open uh, all of them before the Lord and believe God to come and meet with us. Wednesday, our midweek service. And then uh, just to announce in this morning's business meeting, if there's anyone that didn't hear, uh, Brother Hector and Nick have been elected to be on our council. And so we're delighted to have them uh, serve in that capacity. Also, special announcement. Um, we had some issues with parking last conference. Even though it was COVID time, we still flooded the streets out there and it caused all kinds of problems for us uh, that we've been dealing with to this present day. So um, we're going to need to take some steps. And uh, the delegates that are coming from elsewhere, uh, not everybody is sponsored at the motel. Many of them are, are taking care of their own reservations at Airbnb and that type of thing. They will be parking at Office Max and Safeway and walking over here. For our church, we want you to have a parking space, but we don't want you to bring five cars for one family, please. And so what we're going to do to limit that, because we're making everybody walk from all these churches. So we're going to, beginning Wednesday night, we're going to give out a parking uh, a pass that you can put on your dashboard. And one per family we're going to give out starting Wednesday night uh, for the Tempe folks so you can park in the lot. If you are uh, wanting to just contribute and say, you know what, I'm willing to walk anyway. I told every, I, I already made the statement everyone should have to walk from home, but uh, that, that didn't go over so well. <clears throat> But uh, we're going we're gonna to start giving out those uh, parking passes on Wednesday night. So uh, one per family, just to be aware. And so, uh, so we have to take the measures that we have to take. Amen. Praise God. Let's have our ushers come. We want to receive the offering tonight and uh, worship the Lord with his tithe and our offerings. Pastor was in California. And he said that he took an offering and mentioned the scripture in Deuteronomy. God says, I'm the one that gives the power, gives us the power to get wealth. And he said that also in, in, in response to an earlier verse in that chapter where God says, be careful and, and remember that after you break out of the poverty of being wandering in the wilderness and you come into the land and it's a good land and, and God starts to bless you and you have cattle and you have all the things that they would uh, look to in their society as, as uh, symbols of having arrived. Uh, don't forget God, he said. Don't forget that it was God that gave you his blessing. That's what provided these things. And someone was saying, uh, you know, as they looked in our parking lot this morning, they were saying, remember back in the day, we had all these old beat up jalopies that we're like, like having to push to get it started and pop the clutch and, and uh, you never knew if it was going to last another day. And, and they said, and now God's given us, in most cases, uh, a much more uh, modern and reliable transportation. You know what? I stop and recognize right now that God is blessing us. We heard in this uh, meeting this morning, our annual business meeting, God has been blessing our church. And part of the reason that God has been blessing is because you and I have been obedient to bring in his tithe and offerings. And we stop and we recognize God. We know that it's you that gives us power to get wealth and, and the needs of our lives be met. We want to bow our heads. Brother Montenegro, ask God's blessing if you would.
platform we are blessed to have special music tonight with a special choir that has been put together so if you would come up and set up right now amen When the thread of darkness has come breaking in And the force of fear blows like a violent wind When confusion strikes and clouds of chaos sit I know that my heart cannot be held by circumstance for my eyes are locked on the God who sees the end. So when this world around me cries out, who can stand? I know that I will not be moved, for my feet are planted in you. I will not be moved, for my feet are planted in you. A firm foundation, my solid rock. You can't be shaken, you won't be stopped. 
you hold me fast, you never leave, you are the hope to which I cling, a firm foundation, my God you are. Even when the mountains bow to rising waves, no, the seas of doubt will never make me sway. Yes, I will rejoice within the current's rage. Sing it loud. I will not be moved, for my faith I planted in you. And I will not be moved, for my faith I planted in you. I will not be moved, for my faith I planted in you. I will not be moved for my feet I planted in you a firm foundation my solid rock you can't be shaken you won't be stopped you hold me fast you never leave you are the hope to which I cling a firm floods I'm gonna be ready I I'm sealed in you whoa, whoa, whoa. you're holding me you're holding me steady every break of every levee I I'm sealed in you you're holding me you're holding me steady every floods I'm gonna be ready for that that was wonderful amen praise God if you have your Bibles open with me to Psalm chapter 84 just before we get started I would like to agree together uh, as a congregation for uh, brother Mike right here Mike if you would stand we want to pray for our brother they they doing tests on him and they're saying all kinds of bad things could be happening is that right yes. And, uh, and he goes in for another test on Wednesday, and they're already giving him drugs and medications and all kinds of things that are making him feel even worse. Loopy. Loopy, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take authority over Loopy. But tonight, what we want to do is, is this is the night that we're going to violent take it by force. And so tonight, we're going to say, now's the time. I'm going to take hold and... and all kinds of been, things have been going downward. From this time, it's going to start coming back upwards. Pray after me right now. Say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. I, take hold I take hold of provision that you make for me. Provision that you make for me. I cast out infirmity. I cast out infirmity. And all oppression. And all oppression. I break the strategy. I break the strategy of hell against, of my, hell life. against my life. I plead the blood. I plead the blood. Over my, life. over my life 
The blood of Jesus Jesus makes me free. free. Amen. Let's pray for him tonight. We command all sickness and infirmity to leave his body. Lord God, we're believing you for your report. We take authority over sickness. Be gone from his body and all the oppression and the strategies of hell against him. Be broken. And we thank you for that tonight in Jesus' name. Let's give God praise. Thank you, God. Praise God. In Psalm 84, a uh, pastor preached on the sword this morning. Tonight, we're going to preach on the shield. And we're going to get all equipped uh, to fight. Uh, we've been praying for the R- Martinez and Benninger families and the Sanchez family who have lost loved ones, whether illness or auto accident. And the reality is, is that all of us have that appointment one day. The mortality rate of the human race is 100%. And uh, we're all going to end up there. Some, like the Apostle Paul, were anxious for that day to arrive. I remember my mother and my aunt, my mom, as she was in her 90s, kept saying, when is Jesus going to have my house ready, you know? And so uh, he's working on it, Mom. He's making you wait just a little bit longer. But uh, most of us, or most of the rest of us, are not in a real hurry to hasten that day uh, coming. But uh, uh, when we think about what God does for our lives, sometimes we need provision. And uh, sometimes we're looking in the mailbox. Where's that $10,000 check? But you know what? Sometimes you, when you're facing certain things in your life, when your car is spinning out of control and you see a, a tanker truck coming at you, you're not worried about a $10,000 check. Sometimes we, we need something different than provision. We need protection. And I want to talk about that tonight, and I want to minister on our shield. Let's look at Psalm 84, verse 11. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. And the Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. Briefly, I want to, before I move on and talk about the shield, I want to talk about the sun. And I'm talking about God who is, uh, is being looked at here in, in an illustration, in an uh, example of the sun. The sun shines down upon us, making life possible. If there was no sun, we wouldn't be able to be here. (laughs) If the sun just immediately went away, so would we. And so uh, all life. And uh, we understand this illustration, this example, that the sun shines down giving life and giving things that we need. uh, And God shines down his grace upon his people for the needs of our lives, all manner of needs. Uh, God will, no good thing will he withhold. uh, And uh, in Malachi 4 verse 2, but to you who fear my name, The sun of righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings. The sun, S-U-N, of righteousness will arise with healing in his wings. I believe that the word wings there is not really a a good choice of the word. The Hebrew word that is used, the sun doesn't really have wings. uh, uh, But uh, the word that's there in the Hebrew is the word what's at the edges, what's at the extremities. uh, And for a bird, that is wings. But for the sun, it is sun rays. And God will cause those sun rays to shine down upon us of healing and blessing. Blessing and provision, they all come from him. This is somewhat of a common illustration of the Lord in the Bible. The psalmist said in Psalm 80, verse 1, You who dwell between the cherubim, shine forth. James 1, 17, Every good and perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights. Once again, it's an allusion to the Son, 
uh, it's not the sun itself. It's, it's a picture, an illustration of how God is like the sun, shining down to us with whom there is no variation nor shadow of turning because the God that we serve is different than the sun, which sometimes can be blocked out and sometimes sets. But our God is always at high noon and is always able and all-sufficient God. Tonight, we want to, though, press along and talk about, really focus on tonight, the shield that we have. The Lord, the Bible says there, will be a shield to us. In Genesis 15, verse 1, the Bible says, And after these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision, saying, Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield and your exceeding great reward. Now, Abraham, back in those days, it's called Abram, had just been through an armed conflict with people that he was using to fight who were not equipped soldiers, but God was with them and gave them the victory. Now, there's a promise here of both reward and blessing on the one hand God says I will be your exceeding great reward you've turned away from the spoils and rewards that you might have been given in this world God says I've got a better reward for you and so God has provision and blessing for us but he also promises protection because Abram let me tell you something I'm your shield and you don't need to be afraid the world that we live in can be a dangerous place to live. And we're understanding this more and more. You can't even go to the grocery store without wondering if somebody's going to show up with a submachine gun or something like that. But the Bible says in Psalm 3, verse 3, But you, O Lord, are a shield for me, my glory, and the lifter of my head. Sister Stephanie Mavis gave a testimony of God saving her uh, in a driving situation. I've heard uh, a number of reports of this lately. Uh, uh, my daughter Claire was just in a, in a near accident. The people, she's stopping, something's happened in front of her. She's stopping immediately. Uh, she's waiting for the cars behind her to start colliding into her uh, back. And yet they did collide, but they didn't collide with her. And so, uh, thank God, we prayed for, uh, Nate was sharing with me, we prayed for his family member that had been involved in a terrible accident and was in the uh, ICU with horrible injuries, and today he's home, and he's, uh, he's doing, doing so much better, and, and it's a miracle of God's grace. Praise God. Not only physical perils that we face and potential problems that we face that way, but we have a spiritual enemy and there are spiritual assaults that get launched against us as well. Martin Luther wrote a song and it's a wonderful song actually. And it's it, a mighty fortress is our God. And he says these words in that song, did we... Did we in our own strength confide our striving would be losing? In other words, if you tried to take on the devil by yourself without God helping you, you would be the loser in every case. Because the enemy that we have is stronger than us. Sometimes people can make too much of the devil. I realize that. But you know what? He's a lot bigger than us. We have an enemy that's bent on our destruction and he has a plan and it's an engineered plan uh, for each of our lives. It's a crafted plan and it, he is intent on our destruction. But David faced a, what would, we would all say was a superior enemy when he stood before Goliath. Goliath was this massive warrior that intimidated the whole nation of Israel. They're all hiding in their foxholes. And Goliath is out there. Come on, send me somebody to fight with me. And they're all hiding in their foxholes. Uh, but David stands up to him. And David also was in a place of peril later on where, where the king of Israel, King Saul at that time, was employing the whole 
armies of the nation of Israel find this guy and kill him. So David knows what it is to come against a superior enemy who's after you. David writes in 2 Samuel 22, verse 3, The God of my strength, in whom I will trust, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold and my refuge, my Savior, you save me from violence. Amen. This was his confidence. It doesn't matter how big the enemy is, our God is bigger still. And he is our shield, and that's what I want to... I want us to understand tonight and take hold of. Now, that doesn't prevent the battle from happening. David had to face Goliath. That was an actual battle. But it has to do with the outcome of the battle. Our sister shared a testimony tonight. Sometimes life happens to you, and sometimes it's hard, and sometimes it knocks you around, and that's a fact. But you know what? God's grace is what causes us to prevail over that and to win in the end. And this is how God is our shield. Now I want to move on and talk and, and really uh, spend a little time talking about accessing the protective grace that's available to us. How do you get this? How do you take hold of it? Because certainly... God provides some level of protection for every inhabitant of the earth. If that were not so, then the devil would just kill everybody immediately. God provides his, his sun shines down on the righteous and the unrighteous. And God pr provides some level of protection for everyone. But that protection is not... So, so pervasive that God's shield is around everyone. What I want to, exp I'm, I'm going to explain that and how we can have that maximum coverage. That's what we want tonight. One of the greatest complaints that people have and that I hear and that we hear sometimes, some people say, where was God when this happened? I'm all bitter and angry at God if there is a God. Where was he when this happened in my life? That's why I can't serve him. And, and why did he allow this? That generally comes from people who have ignored God their whole lives. And they now say, where is God? And God says, oh, I'm glad you're asking. You've never been concerned. Where is God before? You've been ignoring God. He has no place of any value or importance in your life. All God is to you is someone that you can blame when something goes wrong. The text that we started out with back in Psalm 84, verse 11 The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. You know what? There, there are conditional blessing that God wants to bring to our lives, but it has certain conditions to it. And if you want, if you want the full coverage, you want full coverage? <laughs> So I just need liability, minimum level. No, no, no. God, God makes it available. You can afford this if you're willing to take hold of it tonight and choose this tonight. God's got full coverage for all of us. So let's look at, look at how we can have that. I want to think about four factors that provide us with the maximum protection of God's shield around us physically, mentally, and spiritually. I can say physically too. I can talk about auto accidents. I've had four cars total that I was driving when I tell people that and they're riding in my car, they click their <laughs> seatbelt. <laughs> click. <laughs> it wasn't my fault. But, uh, you know, head-on collision on a, on a freeway. Uh, when I wasn't wearing my seatbelt, 
I know angels are going to, I'm going to owe them some of them big time in heaven. They're going to be, man, you know what, how bad that hurt when I had to block that car. And so, but any case, the first, and, and spiritually, we need spiritual protection because hell has a, hell has a plan against us. He intends to destroy you and me. And that's what his job is. We can't fault him for that. That's what he does. But you know what? We have an answer for that. And that's what I want to talk about tonight. Amen. The first thing that we need to do to access God's shield protection is that first of all, of course, you need to be saved. Psalm 5 verse 12 says, For you, O Lord, will bless the righteous with favor. You will surround him as a shield. With, as a shield. God will bless the righteous and surround them with a shield. You say, I don't know that I'm always, always all that righteous. Listen, if you're saved, you have the robe of righteousness of Jesus Christ, uh, who was made to become sin for us on the cross so that we could become the righteousness of God in him. So we are the righteous. Amen. And that is how we stand before God. And that's how we have a shield of God's grace over our lives. The unsaved don't have that shield. The backslidden walk out from under that shield. And they walk out from the hedge of God's protection. And they walk out from under the covering of the blood. And we remember the Passover and the lamb that had to be sacrificed, one for each family, and they put the, the blood on the doorpost, uh, and, and the death angel who came by, when I see the blood, uh, I will pass over, and, uh, and, and this is exactly the protection that we have, being saints of God, uh, as we are covered, uh, and we have the, the, the blood of Jesus has covered our lives, uh, and we have a protective grace that's over our lives. First thing that we need to do, you want the shield of God, around your life is be saved. Secondly, the way that you have God's protection is for those that are walking in the truth. Because when we begin to give ourselves to the lies of the devil, then the shield starts to come down. When you begin to give yourself to spiritual error, I mean, you know what I'm talking about, spiritual error. Then the shield that was around your life begins to come down. And you come out from under the covering. I don't need to go to church to be saved. Listen, you're coming out from under the covering. You go and do that. Psalm 91 verse 4 This is an illustration, an image of God as being like a bird or, or a, a mother hen or an eagle. It says, he will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. In case you don't know what a buckler is, like the rest of us. Buckler in, in this instance was a small shield. The, the regular word for shield that's used in the Bible, in, in like the Roman shield, was a big old shield. It was kind of like carrying a door around with you. <laughs> it's a big shield. It covers a lot. And, uh, and, but the buckler is, is a small shield, and that's designed, if somebody's taking a whack at you, you might just block it with that little shield. Uh, but in any case, God said, I'm going to give you both. I'm going to be your shield and your buckler. And, uh, and, but it says, you will the Lord will bless those that are walking in the truth. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. And so uh, if the devil, you know, I've heard people say before, the devil's been lying to me. I said, well, of course he does. He's the father of lies. He, he speaks and he lies. He lies to all of us. Well, why do you say, well, the devil's been lying to me? Well, if you know it's a lie, then why are you listening to it? <laughs> 
Say, take your lies back to hell where you came from, and I'm not receiving that, and I'm not even going to believe that for a minute, and I'm going to stand in the truth, and the truth will be like a shield to me. Praise God. I'm not going to be tempted to walk away out of the covering and protection of walking in the truth that God has given to me. So this is another way that we will be maximum coverage is walking in the truth and not believing the lies of hell. Third thing that we need to do tonight to have God's covering and protection. Walk in wisdom and sound judgment. In other words, common sense. We're not going to presume upon God. Hey, you know what? I'm a king's kid and uh, I can drive the wrong way down I-10 at 95 miles an hour and, and he will give his angels charge concerning me, you know. Uh, don't jump off the pinnacle of the temple to prime, try and prove something. Uh, and don't put the Lord to the test that way. That is a grievous sin. And, you know, and, and so uh, we're not going to presume that because I have a shield, I can throw away uh, wisdom and prudence. You know, it might be a good idea to wear your seatbelt. I've learned the hard way because when I bounced my face off the steering wheel and knocked myself unconscious, I said, maybe next time I should wear a seatbelt. And you know what? I wised up. And so when you go in the church van on a trip to Prescott or wherever we might go in the church van, we would like you all please to put on your seatbelts. You know why? I know that we have a God who is our shield, but part of God's being a shield to us hinges upon our using the wisdom that comes from him. Listen to these words. Because when you step out of the will of God and, and, and wisdom, you compromise your protection. Proverbs 2, verse 7. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright, and he is a shield to those who walk uprightly. He, he will store up sound wisdom. He's got wisdom. Listen, do you lack wisdom? Then ask of God who gives freely. Uh, uh, and God's got plenty of wisdom to share with you if you're willing to learn and hear, if you're willing to walk in the, in, the, in the light of that wisdom and understanding, then walk in the light of that and God will be a shield to you. Don't do stupid stuff, uh, you know. Don't see, uh, you know. We did crazy things when we were young and with our cars and all the donuts and all the, it was so fun to learn how to do fishtails on dirt roads. Man, that was so cool. Dirt roads were cool for doing fishtails. And I lived on a dirt road and I was all around dirt roads. And so I'd take my parents' vehicle unbeknownst to them. This was when I was not safe. I can't remember, maybe I was safe. I, I just not <laughs> sanctified yet. But in any case, <laughs> thank God for mercy. Uh, but uh, you know what? Don't do stupid stuff. Amen. <laughs> is, that a good, is that good doctrine? You want to be safe? Then don't do stupid stuff. Praise God. See all the wonderful wisdom that you learn at the door? <laughs> Amen. Praise God. I want to move along thirdly, talk about the third one. Actually, actually, I've got five of them. This is the fourth one. It's faith. Ephesians 6, 16. Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the enemy, of the wicked one. Now, of course, it would be well for us and we're encouraged to put on the whole armor of God. And this is how we're going to stand in the... You know what the evil day is? In the evil day, we will stand. We will, we will win in the end, in the evil day. The evil day is when Satan says, all right, today's the day of my offensive against your life. 
And Mama said there'd be days like that, and indeed there are from time to time, and we face the times where hell comes in uh, like a flood, but when hell comes in like a flood, Spirit of God will lift up a standard, but we need to have our armor on every day because we don't know when the evil day is. It might be tomorrow, it might be two years from now, but uh, uh, if you keep on putting on the armor all the time, then you'll be ready for that. Paul says a critical piece of the armor in the evil day is the shield of faith and you're going to quench the fiery darts or the flaming arrows uh, of the devil. Usually these are strategic thoughts. Puts a little thought in your head. Lucifer puts a thought in his own head. <laughs> How come God gets all the praise? I'm the one that does all the work as we heard about already today and a thought occurs to him and then he puts a thought in Adam and Eve how come God's holding out on you he knows the day that you eat the fruit you'll be like him and and this is a fiery dart and by that what it means is a flaming arrow it shot over the wall of your compound in hopes of catching a large fire and we hear a little thought and we say yeah yeah, yeah, and pretty soon the bonfire is raging within us and he's accomplished his end. You know what? Lift up the shield of faith when the assaults of hell come and the strategies, the lies of hell. Look at that. Ooh, look at that chicky babe. Look at that guy. Oh, he's a real, whoa. He's hot. He's hot. And he probably wants you. And it's like, you know what? That's the oldest one in the book, devil. <laughs> he has strategies that are custom fit for us, for each of us. He knows, he knows Doug Kuhneman, and he knows where my weak spots are. But I thank God that God knows me too. And, and where I am weak, he will show himself strong. I lift up the shield of faith, and I say, no, I'm going to believe God. And the devil says, the walled cities of, of, the, of the promised land are too big for you, and there's giants out there. No, I lift up the shield of faith. I'm a believe God. God has given us the land. Amen. Praise God. In the face of hell, what all that hell wants to do and say, and all the little snare, he's got a special snare for you and a special snare for me, and he has things in mind uh, to to uh, work against us. Uh, but you know what? We just lift up the shield of faith and say, no, I'm going to believe God. Brother Mike, I'm going to believe God. Amen. Hallelujah. And all of us, that hell assaults our lives. We've all been there. And hell has assaulted you and say, you know what? I'm going to believe God that it's going to come out well for me in the end. Now, the next one I want to think about is the one that's really timely for tonight because it's prayer. That's the last one I'm going to look at. Because quite honestly, a prayerless saint is a sitting duck. God stands ready to provide his shield and protection but it's up to us to access that and take it. Ephesians 6, 18, right after it says, put on the whole armor of God, and then it says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance. That means don't quit. And supplication for all the saints. You know, I believe we have so many unsung heroes in this church. And one of the unsung heroes that we have are those that provide us with a prayer cover. Intercessors and supplicators that make up the hedge around our church. In Ezekiel 22, verse 30, God says, And I sought 
for a man among them who would make up the hedge. I was looking for something. I was looking for something. I'm looking for a man among them that would make up the hedge. He's talking about somebody that would pray. How many assaults of hell have been repelled by this very thing? How many times has hell had a big plan of what he was going to do and it just, oh, it didn't work. Somebody prayed a hedge of protection. I'm trying to remember what Pastor Olson was saying before about a guy coming in the Philippines. They had like a hand grenade or something like that. He had all kinds of plans of what he was going to do to bring destruction and yet God had other things in mind and there's a hedge around. Praise God. That's my, my trust. You know, we keep our powder dry. You know, uh, uh, we, we, we take precautions in this church, but the greatest protection that we have is the hedge of God's grace uh, that is around this church and protecting us and delivering us from the evil one. How many judgments that we were due for have been averted, have been postponed or canceled because somebody prayed. God says, Moses, just get back. They're all going to be wiped out in a moment. And Moses intercedes. And he makes up a hedge around the congregation by his prayers. And God says, I'm going to spare them all because you interceded, you prayed. And God's looking for intercessors. Will you pray for this church? God put a hedge around us. God protect us from the wiles of the devil. God deliver us from the evil one. And from the strategies of hell that are against us. And all the people that might be speaking witchcraft. Let it go right back upon them. And uh, you know what? Let, it, let the curse not alight upon us. I want to finish up talking about twofold strength needed in prayer. In Isaiah 28, 6, depending on which translation that you read, you can get two different ideas. I believe they're both accurate. The New King James says, God will be for a spirit of justice to him who sits in judgment and for strength to those who turn back the battle at the gate. This would give the idea of strength to people that are repelling the enemy who wants to come in and assault the city. And these are standing at the gate and saying, no, you're not going to be able to come in and we're going to resist you. We're going to fire our arrows. Uh, we're going to throw our millstones off the top of the uh, wall. We're going to uh, not allow you to penetrate in to the walls of the city. But the second, and, and so God gives strength to our prayer warriors that are providing a hedge of protection around our church. But the second understanding of this really comes out in the uh, King James original. And for a spirit of judgment to him that sits in judgment and for strength to them that turn the battle to the gate. This implies then not only repelling the invader that wants to come in, but now we're going to take the battle to them and we're going to chase them down all the way back to the gates of their city where they came from. And we're not even going to stop there. We're going to break those uh, uh, gates down. That's why the Bible says of the church that the gates of hell will not prevail against us. And I know that this means primarily the strategies and there were, there were chief strategizers that used to sit in the gates and discuss strategy. All that is true. You know, all the strategies, he is a master schemer. He sits around all day thinking of things he can do to mess people up. You know what? Hallelujah. Don't let those strategies prevail. God, I'm God knows what those strategy is, and he knows how to defeat that strategy and diffuse it. Amen. And so you know what? We're going to resist uh, the devil's assault against our lives, but not only that, let's take it to him. 
because there's an old adage thought to have originated with boxer Jack Dempsey, who was a, a, a champion boxer in the early 1900s. And this guy is believed to be the first one that said this. It's been repeated in so many different contexts. The best defense is a good offense. And so this guy's a boxer. And he's given us an understanding. You, if you're going to box somebody, you don't just go out in the ring and cover up. Don't hit me. Don't hit me. You know, you can cover up and cover up, but you're going to lose 100% of those fights. <laughs> he said the best defense is just go after him. And, and, and uh, man, Mike Tyson, when he was in his day, he didn't mess around. <laughs> You know why? This guy had an anger issue. <laughs> and he let that anger issue drive him. And he's like, let me at him. And he's like, boom, runs out there. And bam, bam. These giant fists are smashing somebody down. And the uh, <clears throat> reason I bring that out is because God help us. That's the spirit that we need to have. Not just sit around, oh, I hope the devil doesn't hit me anymore. Why don't you go on the offensive, man? Put him to flight. You know, there's that old image of, uh, maybe it's an old cowboy movie. Some cowboy's not trying to cause any trouble. He's just in the bar, sitting at the, at the counter with his drink. He ain't trying to cause no trouble. People all around him are throwing chairs at each other and breaking stuff, and he's just sitting there. He's not trying to cause any trouble. Until somebody walks up to him and takes the drink and throws it in his face and <laughs> hits him over the chair, uh, over the head with the chair. All of a sudden, all right, you mess, you done mess with the wrong dude. And he he clears the place out. And, you know that's the old uh, the old cowboy movie anyway. But uh, uh, but uh, you know what? Let that be you and I. Devil, you picked on the wrong guy. <laughs> Say, you know what? That because the kingdom of God suffers violence and the violent take it by force. And we're not going to be violent against one another. Or get, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Our, our battle is with demonic spirits and say, you know what, devil? You have cheesed me off one time too many. <laughs> Amen. You know what? I'm going to get a hold of God in prayer and I'm going to fast and I'm going to pray that the strongholds of hell get thrown down. How will you like that? And I'm going to pray that souls that are bound in sin and Tempe will be liberated. And I'm going to pray that the gates of hell will not prevail. I'm going to pray that we're going to have the best Bible conference that we've ever had in this church. I'm going to pray that God's going to give us clear victory over the enemy in every way, physically, spiritually, mentally, and all the garbage that you've been trying to assault me with. You know what? Stinking devil, man. I had that stinking coronavirus. And it wasn't just a mile. I had 15 days where I'm sitting there suffering in my house. And I'm like, oh, you know what? It's time for some payback. <laughs> you know what? Let's, let's, uh, let's, let's have the victory. Amen. Let's have, a, let's have a resounding victory for us, for the church, for our fellowship, for our Bible conference. Amen. So let's get in that prayer room. And the devil's kind of worried about what you might do. <laughs> That's all right. Take it to him. <laughs> this is the way that you're allowed to be violent. Amen. In fact, you're encouraged to be violent. Get that sword out. Get your shield, your helmet of salvation, and let's do some battle. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Let's bow our heads together. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. God fights for you. Because he fights for the one who is defeated and has no strength. God could have just said, oh, well. You're lost, it's your own fault. You're on the way to a devil's hell, but God came to your rescue. 
And the devil was claiming your soul. And God says, not so fast. The lamb that was slain has prevailed. And he has made the way for you and I that we can be saved. God says, I'm coming to your rescue today. And salvation is of the Lord. Is there someone here today? <clears throat> you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ in a personal way. I'm not talking about being a church member or a religious person. God deliver us from being religious people. We want to be people that know the living, true God. And experience him even in a miraculous way in our lives. And that's what Christianity is. God calls you tonight. Maybe you don't understand all that I've said. But one thing that you do know is that, is that you've sinned just like we've all sinned. Uh, and God's spirit is drawing you tonight. Come and be forgiven by the blood that was shed for you on Calvary's cross. And by the Jesus that rose from the dead and conquered death and, and the grave and, and sin. And you can receive that by faith tonight. Anyone at all, you quickly raise your hand and say, you know what, that's me. I want to get right with God tonight. I want to be forgiven. God bless you. God bless you. You can put that down. Anybody else? I want to get right tonight. I'm not going to put it off for another time. That's, that's one of the lies of hell. Oh, it'll be better later on. No, no, no. Today is a day of salvation. Now is acceptable time. Anyone, very quickly, you join this one. You raise your hand. Say, I want to get right with God tonight. Backslider, I want to get right with God tonight. Praise God. Saints, this evening, we need a shield. I need a shield. And you know what? I really want maximum protection. And we've talked about some things of how we can really assure that we have that hedge around our lives and God to be our shield and our exceeding great reward. I will be sun and shield. That's what I pray. Oh God, I need sun and shield. I, I, I need that. And we all need that. But maybe God is dealing with you about something that you need to press into tonight. We're going to open the altars in just a moment. Sister that raised your hand, would you look up at me for a moment? You mean that? You want to get right? Would you come down to the altar and we'll pray with you tonight? I need a sister to come pray with her at the altar. Let's all stand and sing a song. These altars are open tonight. Heard me from darkness unto light. You've given my soul Righteousness, you're my righteousness, you're my strength, you're my redeemer, and my lips shall sing your praise, I lift my hands to you, and bless your name, I surrender.
Father God, I thank you that you are sun and shield. Tonight we're believing you for what you have said in your word. Lord God, we take hold of that promise. And God, that indeed no good thing will you withhold and you're going to protect us and deliver us from the evil one. Lord, we're believing you for your hedge about all of our lives, round about our homes, our marriages, our family members, our children, grandchildren, sons and daughters, while we're driving on the road, while our kids are at school, when we're at work, Moms who are home uh, during the day, God, I pray your heads about each one. And Lord God, especially us as an assembly, God, round about this church, Lord, we believe you for your hedge of grace and protection round about all of us. You shall be to us our high tower and our mighty fortress. Lord God, we're also praying. Over these next days, as we have the opportunity to come before you in prayer, God, inspire our hearts and, and lead us even by your spirit that we will, that our prayers will be mighty and effectual. And Lord God, that we can indeed see all the blessing that you have for our lives and let the strongholds of hell be broken down and the strategies of hell be broken down. Lord God, let captive souls be delivered and we're believing you and we give you praise for all these things in Jesus' name. Let's give God praise tonight. Hallelujah, Lord. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I don't like fasting any more than you do, but I'm going to do it. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. And join with us, and we're going to see God do great things. Brother, uh, uh, Brother Kevin Burris, would you ask God's blessing as we leave tonight? Yes. We ask God that you would be made manifest yes. individually in each of our lives, God. To bring us forward, revive us according to your word. Yes. We're careful to give you all the glory and praise in advance and all God's people shout. Amen. Amen. Praise God. One thing, please note, there's a bake sale after service in the annex. You've still got some time to eat something. <laughs> so, uh, uh, be aware of that. I think that's for the boot camp girls. <laughs>